chairman one of our nation's greatest strengths is our spirit of service and commitment to our communities it is embodied in the sacrifice of the members of our armed services and in millions of our citizens who devote time every day to making a difference in their own cities and towns public service is a value that runs deep in my family my late husband paul served in the first class of peace corps volunteers in ethiopia from nineteen sixty two to nineteen sixty four and as Peace Corps country director in the West Indies in 1967 to 1968. My daughter Ashley also served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Madagascar. Both experiences were life-changing. Not unlike the Peace Corps, two of the bills on our agenda today seek to enhance and create new opportunities for young people who are eager to give back and strengthen local communities through public service at the same time. Ranking member Grijalva's legislation, the Public Land Services Service Corps Act expands on and improves the already successful Public Land Corps program, ensuring that youth and veterans have opportunities to simultaneously develop valuable career skills and restore and rehabilitate our public lands. In my district, Minuteman National Historical Park and Lowell National Historical Park have internship programs that operate under Public Land Corps authority, and I have seen firsthand the benefit of connecting youth to our public lands and historic sites. They make a personal connection that if it doesn't lead to a career or job opportunity, shapes a lifelong affinity for our national parks and other public lands. Bipartisan legislation introduced by Representatives McSally and Moulton, the 21st Century Conservation Service Corps Act, will expand the public land core model so that other federal agencies may also take advantage of partnering with outside organizations to leverage federal funding and help train the next generation of the federal workforce. I am supportive of both pieces of legislation and hope this committee can find a way to marry the best parts of both and send them to the President's desk before the end of the year. We are also reviewing legislation today that supports locally driven historic preservation efforts within the National Park Service. In order to make sure the continued, uh, for th uh, the continued support of our national parks by the American people, especially in this their centennial year, this committee must routinely evaluate visitor services and efforts at the local level to make historic preservation improvements at individual park sites. The bills on our agenda help us meet these goals. H.R. 2333, introduced by Representative Lynn Jenkins, would allow the National Park Service to acquire a small Civil War era house for inclusion in the Fort Scott National Historic Site. This house, known as the Lunette Blair, has been the symbol of the community's support of the Union during the Civil War, and transferring the house to the National Park Service is widely supported in Fort Scott. H.R. 4387, introduced by our colleague on this committee, Mr. LaMalfa, would establish a new unit of the National Park Service at the site of a Japanese-American internment camp used during World War II. Internment of our fellow citizens during World War II is one of the most shameful actions in our nation's history, and creation of this national park is an appropriate way to recognize this piece of our history and educate future generations about the dangers of such policies. The site is already managed by the National Park Service as a unit of the World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument, and this legislation is not expected to significantly increase management responsibilities or costs to the National Park Service. While the Park Service supports turning the National Monument into a national park, I share their concerns that language in the bill unnecessarily restricts future expansion of the site and locks future use of the Antiquities Act. I hope we can find a way to address these significant concerns before the bill moves forward. So I want to thank our witnesses for appearing before the committee today, and I look forward to your testimony. With that, I yield back. Thank we'll you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you all for being here. I appreciate very much all of your testimony. Uh, Mr. Reynolds, uh, would you agree that there's a need for a job training program like the Public Land Service Corps or the 21st Century Con uh, Conservation Service Corps that might provide a, a clear pathway for young people who want to work for a federal land management agency or any other federal agency for that matter when they get out of school. Right now, it seems that to me that the pathway is not as clear as it could be. Yes, Representative, you're, you're correct. It's very difficult to get a job uh, sometimes in the federal process, and that's one thing that these programs do. We not only have a network of young people and veterans that we get to know 
uh, for hiring jobs, but the non-competitive authority, especially some extension of that authority uh, in terms of the time that they have qualification. Uh, currently, it's 120 days after they have finished a program to be picked up, and it often takes uh, three to six months sometimes just to get through a hiring process, so that's why uh, uh, we would love to see an extension of that. And, and uh, as with many companies or industries, uh, our federal land management agencies are suffering the effects of mass retirements of baby boomers, it seems. I would wonder if that's the case in your, with you all. Uh, and so it does seem, again, that in the coming years there is going to be a need for a new crop of well-trained, experienced employees to help fill that gap. Would you, would you agree and comment? Yes, I agree. We have a, a pretty large cohort that are eligible to retire, and it's growing each year. And uh, th these kind of programs not only uh, give us great candidates to pick up, we can improve our diversity in our agency through these programs. Very diverse candidates come through these, these uh, programs as well. Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of diversity because I think that's an issue that we always have, uh, that you be well situated to manage the, broad, the most diverse uh, and the broadest diverse array of employees as possible. So how will this bill assist in that, or either of these bills assist in that? The, the one thing that, um, th that these organizations can do for us is they're great recruitment places. They're in communities uh, where we are not. They can bring us cohorts of folks that we may not reach as easily. That's one huge advantage that we have. And as well, uh, it, it introduces uh, people that may not have had a chance to be out on public lands, for example, or in, in parks uh, to a new career field. And then again, we've, we've had some comment about the maintenance backlog, and it's true that uh, this kind of uh, effort could provide some help to that, but would you agree or do you, you're, could you comment? We know that been, there's been a real, this part of this maintenance backlog is due just to uh, inadequate funding over much time. How do you see it helping, defraying the challenge, but uh, would you comment on whether it's sufficient to the challenge? It, it very much is. We have been uh, deploying uh, some of our maintenance and repair money to youth teams in the last few couple, th couple three years at least. And um, I believe um, the core network folks brought up some of the numbers, but we have a very strong cost effective, usually uh, average savings is over 80% to certain contracting kinds of things. And so we can use these youth teams safely and effectively to do many of the tasks in the backlog projects. So you, w what do you do? Do you prioritize the things where they could be most eff effective? Yeah. But are, do they, are they a replacement for the kind of funds that you might need? They're, they don't necessarily replace, but they, uh, they help extend the funding tremendously. But they also, at the same time, provide the service and education, and as we were just talking about, a recruitment tool. So, so they leverage. They help to leverage Very some much of leverage. those funds without yeah. necessarily b being equal to what you need. Thank right. you. And, and especially uh, we, we get a range of professions that way as well, in the trades as well as uh, sciences and that kind of thing. Thank you. And I yield back. 